If you are using Visual Studio Code to write JavaScript or React, oh boy is this video for you. Because by the end of this video you will have a tool in your toolbox that enables you to write JavaScript and React code faster and with less effort. If we haven't met before, my name is Tuomo, I'm a web developer and on this channel I upload videos, tutorials and tips about modern web development. So if you are not already, consider subscribing so you stay up to date on all the latest videos. So the thing that I want to show you today is code snippets and especially snippets for JavaScript and React. We will first take a look at what code snippets are and then we will learn how we can quickly and easily start using them. And if you are someone who is new to React or have been coding in React just a short while, make sure to stay until the end of the video because I got some exciting news that I want to share with you that you don't want to miss. So code snippets are basically templates that make it easier to enter repeating code patterns such as conditional statements or loops. So you might know when you are coding in React and making React components, most often there is this same boilerplate code that you need to write each time you create a new component. Well, with code snippets you can automatically generate that boilerplate and just change the component name and right away start working on the actual component logic. This will save you a lot of time and effort since you don't have to always type in the same code over and over again. You can also use code snippets for other things such as function definitions and loops as we will see in just a bit or you can even create your own snippets. We won't go into creating our own snippets in this video but rather concentrate on how we can quickly get started on using the snippets and that way start using them in our code. So an easy and fast way to start using snippets for React and JavaScript code is to install an extension that provides these snippets for us. We can do this by searching ES7 snippets in the extension tab in Visual Studio Code and installing it from there. After installing the extension, we are ready to start using the snippets. Snippets can be used with the prefix listed in the extension page. As you can see, there is a bunch of different snippets we can use, but I collected a few of my favorite and most used snippets, and we are going to take a look at those now. Feel free to browse the extension page for all the available snippets. So I have my Visual Studio Code and JavaScript file open here, and let's see how we can use some of these snippets inside this file. So first, let's see how we can define for loop with the for loop snip. And normally I would do something like, if we want to, for example, look through users, I would do something like for let user in users and then go to braces and do some stuff here. But if we want to use the for loop snippet, we can actually just type in fin and Visual Studio Code suggests it right here at the top and press enter and it fills out the for loop and then we can just replace the item variable name with user and the object with users like this. And we have our for loop defined. The next snippet that I often use is for defining a function and that can be used with nfn and then pressing enter. And we can see that we get a nice function definition with that snippet. The next snippet is for adding a console log statement and that can be done with clg and then enter and then we can just change up the parameter and we got our console log statement ready. Okay, these were some JavaScript snippets, so let's get to React snippets next. So, first one is for importing React, and that can be done with EMR and enter, and it automatically types in the import statement for React. And then, if we want to also import the component from the React separately, we can do that with EMRC. And and it imports React and the component separate. So the next one is actually for React Router. So if we type in IMRR and press enter, 
we get the import statement for the browser router, route and knob link. Then there is a couple of snippets for the lifecycle methods for React component. And the first one is cdm and enter and it creates the component did mount method. And the other one is cdup and what that does is it creates the component did update method with the prep props and prep state parameters. All of these React snippets were the smaller ones that can be used to create a React component part by part. But we actually have snippets for a whole component boilerplates also. So if we type in RCC and press enter, we actually get a whole component written for us and we can just uh, change up the component name. Let's say it's user display and that way we have the component boilerplate ready and we can start working on the actual component logic. Another one that I often use when I create React components is RPCP. This creates a React component that has uh, prop types imported and then also added to the component down here. This really saves time, especially when I'm creating multiple components, because this way I don't need to type in the same boilerplate code every time I'm creating a new component. And the last one I got for you is called RC Redux. And what it does, it creates a component that uses Redux. So it imports the connect function from React Redux and then defines the map state props function and map dispatch the props object and then returns the component which is wrapped using the connect function. Okay, that's all for now. I hope you found this video helpful and if you did, please leave a like and if you're not already, consider also subscribing. Also, if you are someone who is new to React or someone who has just used React for a short while now, I got some exciting news for you. Because you can now get my React Basics course for free. The way that works is that the course is hosted on Skillshare, that is a learning platform with thousands of courses on it. And if you are new to Skillshare, and register through the link below, you can get two months of Skillshare Premium for free. That means that you can watch my courses and all the other courses on platform for free for two months. And there is no commitment you can cancel anytime. So I strongly recommend that you at least check it out from the link below. But that's all for now. Remember to check out Skillshare, subscribe, like the video, all that stuff, and I'll see you in the next video.